we got a good show tonight. Um, 1984. 1984. Let's introduce this since we're just now kind of getting rolling here. My name is Lloyd Cryer. You're watching Frightmare HQ. I'm your host, and I'm here today with... It's Charles. Charles Charles Doe's. Charles Doe's. What's going I'm on, here. brother? Just hanging out, you know, doing my life, thinking about 1984. That was the year I was born, so I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Is were you really born in 1984? Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, now you do, Lloyd. Knowing is half the battle. Okay, it is half the battle. So, uh, who's starting this one off tonight? You are. All right. So we've got uh, 1984, March 9th. Uh, this is a um, Stephen King adaptation by Fritz Kirsch. Starring Linda Hamilton, Children of the Corn from 1984. Children of the Corn. That's the right. Corn Lloyd. Outlander. <laughs> That's all I got. Outlander. <laughs> That's the entire movie summed up. Outlander. We have um, your woman. We've got the great um, Malachi from Children of the Corn. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is great poster art. This was the art done by Gary Pullen for the Arrow video release. Um, so, yeah, really great art here. Let's uh, see. Yeah, Go ahead. I mean, no, I mean, um, Children of the Corn was was very unconventional. Um, you know, that the atmosphere of the isolated town is well captured. Um, John Franklin is just creepy as Isaac. Think about him just uh, something wrong. <laughs> something wrong with that boy. Something's wrong with that boy. We um, had both at a show uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was. Um, I think Children of the Corn's a fun watch. I mean, mostly, I I, I kind of feel like it was a a bad screenplay adaptation. George Goldsmith was a screenwriter. I don't know. It just seems like he didn't really know what he was doing or <laughs> he didn't know what to do with the story. Uh, I mean, regardless, he never did anything again. So that probably tells you. <laughs> but um, I mean, he wrote a couple of low budget movies, but it's yeah. Yeah, I, so I like the movie. It's it's goofy, but it's it's OK. You know, it's so crazy, though, that <clears throat> there were a lot of, I mean, Stephen King was a hot commodity, but a lot of his films didn't really turn out the way he, I think a lot of people hoped that they would. Well, the thing about King, too, is the books are so much more graphic than the films. Right. So it's like, it's like you can't make them <laughs> verbatim or it's going to be like rated X. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fritz Kirsch, I mean, I was never really a fond of Fritz Kirsch either. He he did like 11 other movies after this, but nothing I would ever recommend ever watching. Um, he did an action movie in 87 called Gore, which is just horrible. It's It hurts your eyes it's so bad. Um, I guess to show you where his career went, in 1997, he directed The Crayola Kids Adventures, Tales of Gulliver's Travels. Ah, so that's, that's where he went. So if you're wondering... That's him. <laughs> so he did kind of stick to the kid formula, though. He loved the kid. He loved the kid. <laughs> I said he loves the kids. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's a great film. I'm going to go ahead and take this down uh, so we can go to the next one. But I, it's a classic, in my opinion, just because it was something that I grew up with. And I've always, I've always had a soft spot in my heart. And then... You can't can't beat Linda Hamilton being in it. No, no, really not. Um, and if you're ever in Iowa, Gatling, Nebraska is actually Whitting, Iowa, and it's basically exactly the same as it was in the movie. <laughs> so, did you go? Did you go there and do a uh, a location thing? No, I've never done film locations there. Um, I've wanted to many times, but it's literally like true to the book. It's like two hours from the closest like big city. <laughs> it's like is it really? Of, yeah. So, oh wow. What do you do? Um, well, next, I think we've got one people like. 
April 13th, 84, Friday the 13th, the final chapter. But it was not the final chapter. But instead, it was the final chapter. <laughs> My absolute favorite of the entire series, though. I love this you know, movie. A lot of people say that, too. You know, it's it picked up immediately after the events of Part 3. Uh, story follows Jason, who's supposed to be dead, but he's revives in the morgue and then starts killing people again. <laughs> It's it's definitely the most memorable of the series. Um, some of the buddies killed from, of course, from Savini. Uh, still a great score from Harry Manfredini. And yeah, I mean, it's a lot of people's favorites, like you're saying. Well, hey, there's a bunch of people. <clears throat> looks like they're finding us now. Um, sorry for the trouble in the beginning, guys, but thank y'all for jumping in and saying howdy. Yeah, everybody on now. So we had some issues uh, with our links. We updated it. Sorry. I'm not sure yet what it was, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, um, the or original link didn't work, but that sometimes happens, right, Charles? Yeah, sometimes that happens. What are you going to do but keep going on and on, right? Keep moving. Keep on moving. Keep on trucking, um, Wood. I think a lot of people have seen Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Um, mm -hmm. I think, uh, like I said before, I think it's one of the best of the series. Uh, Joseph Zito was a great director, especially for that kind of stuff. He also did Invasion USA, which is highly yeah. recommended as well. And the Pro and Prowler too, which is, yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, I think the best part of this, I gave you a clip of, and that's Crispin Glover's amazing dance sequence. That's what we're going to watch. I'm going to pull that up because pull it up. that is one of the most amazing things about that movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the hell was that? That's Charles Mix. <laughs> what, right. what, what clip did have I pulled on us? That's the best clip ever. It's a death sequence. That's how uh, I yeah. see it in my head. I hear the Calypso beat when he starts dancing. I can't stop. All right. <laughs> uh, somebody said full body dry heave. <laughs> full body dry heave. <laughs> That's insane, man. Full uh, body. I've heard that too, <laughs> that Ted White didn't like Corey Feldman, but I can't imagine a lot of people did like Corey Feldman <laughs> on set. Man, Ted, Ted White was like 58 years old when he played Jason too. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and he was like John Wayne's yeah. uh, stunt double. Stunt double, yeah. So incredible. So I think we all know that one. Let's drop on to the next one. What we got? All right, what we got now um, from... May 11th, 1984. This is a uh, fire starter. Another great Stephen King adaptation um, with um, uh, who is the guy that played the, the creepy mentor, but he was kind of a double agent. George C. Scott. What is George that C. Scott. Yeah. Yeah. He, oh my. He was good, but man. I don't know why they cast him as an American Indian. That's not that's not a good role for him. That's not politically correct today. <laughs> oh no, no, no. You couldn't get away with that anymore. You watch the out, you're like, oh no, no. Oh no. There was just way too much cocaine going on at this period in Hollywood. So I mean, everybody knows about the cocaine. Cocania. Hey. Co cocaine. Cocaine. It's the cocaine, Lloyd. We make it the fire starter. But everybody knows what Firestarter, it was, you know, about a little girl that had pyrokinesis, of which kind of seemed to be a recurring theme in a lot of his, a lot of Stephen King stories, you know, like with Carrie and Firestarter and there yeah. were others. I'm trying to remember, you know, the others, but um, you've got some notes on here. John Carpenter was originally going to direct, to direct this movie, but after the thing, was for some reason a critic and box, box office failure. He was removed from the project by Universal. Like forcibly removed. <laughs> wow. And then um, they got Mark Lester. And we know how great of a director Mark Lester is. Oh, yeah. 
the best, right? <laughs> the best. <laughs> I don't even know who that guy is, but okay. <laughs> he's Mark Lesnar. He's he's his own person. He's whoever yeah. he wants to be. Um, Mark Lester, well, he's not an awful director. So he he did a lot of stuff after this, but I think the only thing known that he did was Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger that he did real soon after this. He also did Showdown a Little Tokyo, but I don't think horror was his genre per se. Um, but, I mean, it's the it's an enjoyable weekend movie. It's, it's definitely largely held together by Drew Barrymore. Cause she was yeah. so good. Um, I, I, I can see the film in my head that would have been with John Carpenter and it would have been a lot, a lot better, but we got what we got and it's enjoy. It's enjoyful. It's, it's, it's can be kind of slow nowadays, but I don't know. I enjoy it. Yeah. I still enjoy it too. And, and you have the tangerine dream soundtrack, which they were incredible. Tangerine dream. Yep. Very good. David Keith, Heather Locklear, and Drew Barrymore, as well as George C. Scott. So, yeah, Heather no, Locklear yes. was playing Drew Barrymore's mom, and she was like not much older. She was like fifteen years older than her, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fourteen yeah. years older than her. So, yeah, I've read I've read that book, and there's um, I kind of love the you know the whole idea of the shop and you know the secret government organization. Yeah. <laughs> That was part of it, but you know, I uh, I think it's a good movie. I think it. You're right. It could have been better, but it is what it is. Yeah, it could have been better, and I think that was one of the problems. I think it. I think it tried to be really faithful to the book, <clears throat> but you can't do like in a two hour movie, so it just gets really all over the place. You know, they try to cram a lot in. Yeah, and yeah. That's kind of the problems with it. Um. All right. Next, I think we got one people like. So. May of 1984. And I'm going to say May of 1984 because nobody knows when the hell this movie was first shown. It was sometime in May of 1984. And that's Toxic Avenger. Yes. Now, now, technically, this is an 84 release, but it didn't really get a wide release till 86. It basically played at one theater in New York for like 18 months <laughs> at like midnight. It was the only place that played it. And after like a year or so, they finally got a, like a following, and they were able to get it released like mid of 1986. You know, I I have a soft spot <clears throat> in my heart for Toxic Avenger. I think it's probably can we say it's the best trauma film? Oh, it's the best trauma film, and it's the one that <laughs> it's the one that they anchored to for like <laughs> 20 years. I mean, it's really everybody knows it. Yeah. It spawned some sequels that were uh, okay. And they're there. They exist. Um, really, it's bizarre. It has to be seen to be believed. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's, it's so, it's so, it's supposed to be bad. So it's one of those movies where you're like, if you say, no, you don't like it, then I guess you like it because you're not supposed to like it. But if you like it, then you probably don't like it, even though you think you like it. It's, it's a conundrum. <laughs> <laughs> it makes your head go round and round. So, uh, um, Optimus Power brought up that. Uh, they made a cartoon uh, of the Toxic Avenger, which I I don't think I've ever seen that. But cartoon you know, movies, comic book, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really been the thing that carried trauma and it made them famous, and you know, brought attention to everything else that they did. But I've I've never been a a big trauma fan, to be honest with you. It, uh, other than Toxic Avenger, you know, I'm not. It's just not my thing. Yeah, it's. Other than Toxic Avenger, I mean, Toxic Avenger is like 80 schlock at the max. Um, other than that, I can never get into a lot of this stuff because it felt like things trying to replicate what happened with Toxic Avenger, and I just couldn't get into them. Yeah. Uh, Bradley says Tromeo and Juliet is the best trauma film. All right, Bradley. We'll listen to you. Okay. We'll listen to you. All right, Bradley? We do have a trailer, so let's go ahead and play that. Cool. Meet little Melvin. He's a 90-pound weakling. Everyone hated Melvin. Yeah, I'm gonna take this mop and shove it down your throat. They teased him. I wanna do it with you. Okay. They taunted him. They tormented him until he had a horrifying accident and fell into a vat of nuclear waste. 
transforming little Melvin into a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength. Melvin became the Toxic Avenger. The first superhero born out of nuclear waste. Yes, the muggers and the rapists didn't know what law and order was until the Toxic Avenger came to town. Holy shit! I don't know what it was, but it saved my life. All right, everybody, drop your tacos or I'll blow your brains out. The vandals and the perverts had their way with the little people of Tromaville until the Toxic Avenger ripped them apart. The Toxic Avenger is coming to your town. Look out. Oh, my that, God. Look that, out. That trailer seemed too long to me. How about you? It just seemed like it kept going longer than it should have. You know, to be honest with you, that trailer is almost four minutes long, and I had to edit it down myself. No way. I'm not kidding you. The trailer is three minutes and 52 seconds long. It just, it just keeps, keeps doing that over and over again. The Toxic Avenger. The pedophiles didn't know what was coming. <laughs> the newspaper stealers didn't know what was coming. <laughs> Anything they can think of. He's after them. Uh-oh. I said, oh, look who we've got here. No! Uh, the return no! of El Diablo. Why is El, El Diablo, Diablo here? I can hear you, El Diablo. <laughs> We're going to get you one day. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of it. You ready? The power of Christ compels you. Go, Charles. Ah, good job. Ooh. Wow. I feel Jesus in my heart. Woo. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Praise This Jesus. house is clean. Praise, mm. praise, praise. Praise Jesus. I don't know. I kind of missed El Diablo. How about you? El Diablo haunts my dreams. <laughs> uh, ah, so right. next, next we've got another Corey Feldman uh, film. Corey better. Feldman returns from the grave to haunt one more time. <laughs> this is um, I got to find the date on this. The release date is June 1984. Gremlins. Oh, Jesus Christ. Gremlins. A Christmas what? movie not released during Christmas. Why? I, it's a great movie, too, man. I love this movie. It's got uh, Phoebe Cates, Corey mm -hmm. Feldman, uh, Zach Galligan, Dick Miller, and uh, directed by the great Joe Dante. Gremlins is a masterpiece. It's dark, funny, suspenseful. Um <clears throat> It was super original, and it spawned all these copycat small creature films after it. Like Critters, for example, was spawned from that. Um, yeah, Monty. Plus, plus, Gizmo is one of the cutest things that's ever existed in the history of film. Yep, I want to snuggle Gizmo. And we can't forget that Gizmo was voiced by Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel. Yeah, great boy. Bright, bright light. Bright light. I think, mm. I think everybody was quoting bright. that. Forever when that movie came out, bright light, bright light, bright light. You know, it's um, in all of Dante's movies had such great cinematography, and that's because of John Hora. He did almost all the Dante movies: Howling, Twilight Zone, the movie Matinee. Um, really set an awesome feel to these movies, and you know the the score is fantastic. Yeah, uh, Jerry Goldsmith did the score. Jerry Goldsmith. Gave us a score that's almost like a dark circus throughout the whole movie. It's like, it's fun but creepy, you know. Um, it really is. It's it's got that dun 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 dun. dun. Goldsmith, we've mentioned a lot so far on this eighty series. I mean, he did, you know, Poltergeist, Psycho Two, Twilight Zone, the movie. He did movies all the way back to the fifties. Jerry Goldsmith worked on the original Twilight Zone. That was like one of the first things he scored. So oh, that I dude was. That. That dude was just a, a machine of awesome ingenuity, I'll tell you. Plus, Kingston's Falls was Cordell Square, and it was Hill Valley from Back to the Future. I mean, it was identical. They they pretty much started filming Back to the Future right after Gremlin, so the buildings are exactly the same. The theater, it's all the exact same set. They just threw fake snow on it, and they took away the fake snow and made Back to the Future. So, hmm. I, they I changed didn't a couple that. of the names. Yeah, we they changed a couple of the business names, and that was pretty much... Yeah. We talked about it the other uh, show a few days ago about a film set that looked a lot like that, but it wasn't. 
Yeah, Warner Brothers uh, studio. Oh yeah, they have, they have like a generic like town square too, and it's been used in lots of movies. Like Courthouse Square is, it's still used in movies today, and it still looks pretty much the same. I went there a few years ago, and it's pretty much the same. Hmm. Well, Gremlins is a great movie, and yeah. um, actually, I, I I talk about Corey Feldman a lot and give him a hard time, but you know. Uh, there's uh, so many uh, childhood films of mine that I grew up with, with Corey Feldman in them. So he's in them. He, he, he dominated the eighties with, his, he just was there. I just remember that at one point he was, he seemed so angry, like at his parents. And it always confused me. Like he, he complained that I remember seeing him on like some news station and he said, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm upset at my parents because like, look at Ricky Schroeder, his parents invested in Taco Bells and stuff for him. And, and he has money and now I have no money. <laughs> uh, that's, that's fun. Um, <laughs> it is kind of fun. I mean, Gremlins is great. Let's just say that. I mean, Gremlins is, is, is really, it's kind of based on a book that Roald Dahl did in the forties called Gremlins. Oh, uh, is it really? Yeah. Screenplay, I know, was adapted by Christopher Columbus, who wasn't a director yet, but he went on to do a crap ton of movies like Home Alone, Adventures in Babysitting, Mrs. Doubtfire, you know, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I think people saw some of those movies he ended up directing. So yeah, yeah, this movie really had like a dream cast, you know, all around. And it just nothing else you could ask for in a movie. I like Gremlins, too, also. And I love the way they kind of made fun of themselves and had her do a monologue about um some tragedy that happened to her on um Abraham Lincoln Day or President <laughs> Day. Day. I don't know, but it was just like what? <laughs> I know it was it was hilarious though. But that's part of Gremlins too is when Hulk Hogan appears. He like rests his shirt up and he's like, you're gonna show this damn movie. I'm Hulk Hogan the Hulk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's when the what theater does have crazy to do with anything. Yeah. <laughs> what does it have to do with anything? What the hell's going on? Uh if you've never seen the key and pills Sketch. There's a Key and Pill sketch where they're making fun of them coming up with the concept of Gremlins 2. And it's like the most hilarious thing ever. Because they're pretty much guys taking on a boardroom just throwing stuff in there, like, yes, we're gonna have Hulk Hogan in it, the Hulkster. He's coming. It's like I, I, no. I, I think I, I've seen a lot of Key and Pill, but I think I've missed that one. I'm gonna go. Oh, find Jesus, that after it's the, the best thing they did. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go go ahead with the All next right. one. The next one is uh, a strange one. Okay. So I put this on here, and I didn't want to put this on here. There's a lot of things I have with this movie. All right. June 22nd, 1984, The Hills Have Eyes, Part 2. Okay. So first, this is not a 1984 release. I'm going to put it out there, but I'm going to get it over with. All right. I'll explain why in a second. Let's do this. But first off, I'm a huge fan of the original. I like the original, right? Compared to that, this is something else. This this is not the same <laughs> film. But here's why. So it was shot super cheap in 1983. Wes Craven basically said, I need money, so I'll make this movie. They ran out of money towards the end of the movie, and they stopped production. Then Wes Craven tried to make money, so he took this movie that was three-quarters of the way done. He made like a 59-minute cut, and they showed it at something called Mist Fest in Italy. Miss Fest in Italy over the weekend of June 22nd, 84. So that's why people think it's 84. It was basically never shown again until he got popular with a movie that also came out this year, we know, called Nightmare on Elm Street, right? They let him finish Hills Have Eyes 2 after that because he needed more money and he convinced them to give them money. But they wouldn't allow him to shoot any scenes, so they had to pad it with stuff from Hills Have Eyes 1. So basically... <laughs> You have a movie that's 90 minutes, that's 35 minutes, Hills Have Eyes 1, basically. And then they released it in August of 85. This, this movie makes me sad. Let's just say there. I, I summed it up. <laughs> so there. That's all I have to say about that. It's basically, it was just basically a train wreck. Yeah. Uh, the score was done by Harry Manfredini, too. But all he did was rip off his Friday the 13th score and put it in this movie. He was like, boom, Hills Have Eyes 2. It's like... <laughs> It's Friday the 13th, you son of a bitch. <laughs> no. Seals have eyes. <clears throat> so, um, 
A group of bikers headed to a race become stranded in the desert and find themselves fighting off a family of inbred cannibals who live off the land. Inbred cannibals? Um, Yeah. No. (laughs) Oh, it's such a train wreck. I was always amazed that they made a remake of the original, and it did so well, and people loved it so much. I, I predicted that movie would be terrible, but it's actually not bad. The remake of the original? The remake. It's actually not the remake of the sequel, Hills Have Eyes Two, which they came out with. That one was horrible again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it follows suit exactly what you need it to be. Well, it's kind of like, um, uh, God, there's uh, the Wrong Turn trilogy, or not trilogy. They've made like six of those movies. All, all of those after Part One were just terrible. I mean, Optimus Power was right. It should have been called Cannibals Run. That's what they should have been called. Cannibals run. <laughs> oh, that's good. <clears throat> All right. So next up, uh, July 13th, 1984. Scream for help. Uh, oh, this, so, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> Let's go. I was just gonna, I was just kind of gonna read the synopsis. British horror <laughs> film directed by Michael Winner. The story follows a teenage girl who discovers that her stepfather is trying to murder her and her mother. But when she tells people no one will believe her. Ba, ba, ba. <clears throat> so, Winter made this, I know, between Death Wish 2 and Death Wish 3. And it's mostly been forgotten for a good reason. It's a it's a bad movie, but it's almost bad in a way that makes it watchable. Almost. Um, the Yeah, have you seen this one? I have. What do you think? And- I didn't. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it that much. Yeah, it, it uh, wasn't, wasn't my thing. It's. I don't know. It just didn't. It just didn't seem to work. Yeah. Well, who did the script on it? Um, script was done by. Oh, well, screenplay was done by Tom Holland, but kind of. So kind of like Tom Holland said that they, he wrote a screenplay and the director was like cool and then just kind of did whatever the hell he wanted with it. Oh <laughs> so, really? Um, what else, Lloyd? What else about this one? <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. I, you know, it was, this was kind of a uh, a grail kind of a film for me for a long time. I, it was hard to find for a while there. <laughs> it is hard to find. And I finally, it was weird. Voodoo uploaded it one, at one point. Really? Yeah, it's, I think I rented it from Voodoo, and I was I, that happens to me a lot, man. When I when I have these grail films that I'm looking for and then I finally find it, it's like, Oh, well that wasn't so great. What did I spend so much time looking for this for? You're like, I don't, I don't want anything to do with this movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the screenplay was, I mean, the screenplay, the score was done by the guy from Led Zeppelin. Uh, John Paul Jones did the score to this. The score is atrociously bad. I mean, I know Jimmy Page from Zeppelin helped him on it too. The score is horrible. I mean, it's like all over the place. It's not in the right places. It's edited weird. It's like he was trying to move into scores, and that was not his field. Go back to Zeppelin. The <laughs> score is horrible. It sounded like it sounded like me playing a synthesizer. I don't know how to play a synthesizer, so it's just like I'm just like what's going? What the hell's was going? He just on? not making enough money with Zeppelin, or what? I'm sure he was doing fine. I don't know though. I don't know what was going on? Bizarre. Uh, I guess he needed more money for Coke. I mean, everybody needs money for Coke. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, next movie up, uh, you've got this one. What do we got? Ah, August 24th, 84, zombie film called Mutants. Brothers Josh and Mike run off the road by local rednecks and are forced to spend the night in a small town whose inhabitants are suffering from a mysterious disease. Ooh. With the great uh, Wings Hauser. Wings Hauser. Let's watch the trailer before we talk about this one. Yeah. From the depths of the earth, through the shrouded mist, it is coming. The final phase of an accident of nature. Nothing human can have this in its veins and left. It is unexplainable. Unbelievable and uncontrollable. You can't see it in the darkness or hear it in the silence. 
but you can feel its presence and sense the danger. Ah. Mutant. Don't go out there. Its time has come. Let me. Let me. Mutant. Any one of us could be one of them. There is no place left to run. Nowhere left to hide. And there is no escape. We're gonna get out of here, you understand me? We're gonna get out. No! Mankind's deadliest threat would not come from the skies. Mutant. Mutant. Uh, I, have, I have never watched the that movie in its entirety. Never. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I I like Mutant. To be honest with you, it's uh, it gets some negative reviews, but to me, it's like a nice slice of B movie fun. It's it was part of a sort of eco horror revival that happened in the eighties. Um, it's not gory. It relies a lot on suspense and effects. Kind of, but it kind of works for me. It's they achieved a lot of what was a small budget in the movie, and it's kind of not easy to find, really. I need to I need to check it out. It's why it's I don't know why, but I've never been able to sit through the whole thing. It's not because I didn't like it or it was boring or anything. It just seems like I've just never made it through it. But it's one that I've always wanted to complete, so I'll probably do that soon. Yeah, the score's pretty good. The score's done by Charlie Band, <clears throat> brother Richard Band, to the score to it. Um, it sets a nice atmosphere in it, yeah. So it's fun. I mean, I think it, it did get some some negative reviews, but I think it kind of people expected a lot more gory zombie film, and it wasn't kind of that gory. Mm-hmm. There's a limited budget. Um, its original title was Night Shadows, and then it was changed to Mutant when it became when it came to video, and that just sort of stuck. So it's been Mutant ever since. It seems like it it was very prevalent in the video stores at the time. It seems like I always saw that in the video stores. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, not, not much else I could say about it. I mean, there's, you know, it's got a pretty decent cast in it, but the acting's pretty good. Um, I recommend giving it a watch. I mean, it's not going to like blow you out of the water, but it's a fun watch. It really is. Like you said, Wings Howard's in it. Um, Bo Hopkins is in it. Both actors did quite a bit. Um, okay. Well, so, uh, the next film is another eco horror film, uh, August 31st, 1984. Chud. Oh, Lord. Stick, humanoid underground dwellers. Yes. Chud. I love Chud. Chud. <laughs> I don't know anybody that doesn't love Chud. Well, Chud's a good example of a lower budget done well. I mean, really they invested their money into an actually decent cast instead of some actress who can't act that to his tits pop out when she goes to tie her shoe, you know? It's like, <laughs> I mean, we've got John Hurt and Daniel Stern in it, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that was a fun VHS era film. Um, and I know it's gained kind of a cult following over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a sequel that everybody gives a hard time, Bud the Chud. Yeah. Which really has nothing to do with Chud. Um, but it's a, it's a fun movie. Um, I recommend it. It's kind of, um, I don't know how you describe it other than an eco horror film. And it's, it's definitely a B rated film, but, uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's B horror. It's eco horror, <laughs> a monster film. Um, there's a real good Blu-ray that, uh, Arrow brought out for it. Um, yeah. I mean, I'd say, I think a lot of people have seen it. If you haven't seen it, Check it out. Give it a watch. I mean, the cast is fun because, you know, John Hurd and Daniel Stern ended up doing Home Alone together, which is a completely different movie. Granted, they don't have any scenes together Home Alone, but yeah. Um, my only problem with Chud is I didn't like the, the score in it. I thought the the synthesizer score in it wasn't that good. But other than that, I mean, I enjoyed the movie. It's it's a fun B movie. It's been a Roll few down. years since I have seen it. Um so it would be fun to go back and visit that again. I probably if I probably rate it much higher because <laughs> I haven't seen it in a few years. But it's one of those movies if you watch it again, you're like, oh, this was fun the first time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Back again. No. Look at that. 
Oh my god, it's echoing us. Yeah. That's kind of it's kind of creepy. Oh, ah, there it goes. Woo! Amen. Amen. Somebody said that Joe Bob Briggs doesn't love Chud. <laughs> well, well, sorry, Joe Bob. We're not Joe Bob Briggs, all right? We're Lloyd and Charles. We're Lloyd and Charles. We're the we other like what we like. movie reviewers. <laughs> we like what we like, all right? That's right. All right, next up is one of my favorite films. I love this movie. Yes, September 21st, 84. I do love this movie. Company of Wolves. The Company Fantastic. of Wolves is a great movie. Um, it's a British gothic fantasy horror film directed by Neil Jordan. Uh, it's based on a story written by Angela Carter uh, from her short story collection. I know that. Um, she co-wrote the screenplay. It has a phenomenal poster, which is there. Um, it's it's beautifully crafted. It's like a beautiful fairy tale. It's not 100% a horror film. It's more of a fantasy that kind of tiptoes on horror esque, but the story is super clever. It, it kind of mixes a lot of stories together and to a point where it's almost confusing, but it works, you know? Yeah, I, I love uh, Company of Wolves also. Um, it I don't know. I think I bought a uh, import Blu ray of it uh, because I love it so much, but I'm not sure if it ever got a US, did it? Um, I don't. F- Hmm, I don't know. Um, no, actually, you, you, no, no, you have to get an import version. Okay. That's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I looked. I think there's just a, there's a Spanish version and there's like a Europe version. I think that's it. Well, it's odd and and it's a it's a weird movie, but um, it's it's a good movie. It's really like you said. It's very well crafted. It's good. Very well put together. It's something that uh, I recommend, but I can't. I don't know that everybody would love it. I don't know if everybody would love it either. Um, you kind of got to go into it with open eyes, knowing you're going to see something that's not 100% horror and just try to have some fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we put up the poster. We don't have a trailer for it. Yeah, I don't have a trailer. Um, I checked out a few of the trailers. They're they're not that good. Uh, they don't show a lot of good stuff, so kind of skipped it. Yeah, the transformations are something that had never been done before and haven't been done since either. So it's got that going for it too. Yeah, I mean the the effects in it working was good. Um, <laughs> kind of the, when you see the transformation scene, it's 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 really cool. Um, it was nominated for like a BAFTA for best special effects. I know that. Uh, it's fun though. I mean, it definitely has some ground basing effects in it. Um, kind of along the lines of a little different than what happened with America with London a few years before it kind of on its own ways. It had its own kind of effects that are a little different. Uh, still a lot of fun though. A lot of fun. I'd recommend checking it out. If you can find a copy of it. <laughs> it just yeah, me too. Me too. It was streaming for a while. It was on a bunch of streaming services, but I haven't I seen it in a while. Yeah, I, I need to go back and watch it again. It's just because it's one of my favorites and um, recommended, highly recommended. Do it. Do it. Do okay, it, Doug. Up. Uh, October 12th, 1984, a crazed rock singer returns from the dead to murder members of his former band. Oh, no. Rock what is it, Lord? October Blood. When you thought it was safe, there's Rocktober Blood. <laughs> There is the most phenomenal trailer for this, and I, I, I gave it to you. We have to watch it because I don't even know how to explain the trailer. It's just like it just goes into this like musical number for like a minute is this straight. The one with the clown guys, uh, the band I think so. up as clowns. Okay, it's sorcery it was a band. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> depths of hell he's back from the dead to seek revenge on the living one by one he butchered their bodies to reach his final victim the rock and roll star he adored a madman with a message from hell
October Blood, rated R. All right, Metal Rooster. Ah, it's like the trailer's like all scary. It's like, then we will go into a 63 second musical number. That guy is not scary at all either. I mean, he's supposed to look scary and like a badass, but yeah, it didn't work on me. This is this is only available on DVD. It's not available on Blu-ray. Be surprised. Um, the lady who directed this, it's a lady who directed this, I believe. Yeah, Beverly Sebastian directed it. It's a lady. She didn't really do much else. She had a whole series called Gator Bait. Or Gator Bait 2, Gator Bait 3. I remember Gator Bait, yeah. yeah. Gator Bait's not good either. Um, I, I really want to be mean and I really want to give a copy on DVD to somebody. I really do. <laughs> I really want to give one away to somebody. I really want somebody to have this in their life. Just for the musical numbers that it from sorcery, I really want somebody to have it. Well, am I thinking the right? I've seen this movie because I remember the the scenes from the trailer. But am I thinking of the right movie? Isn't there one that has like guys dressed as clowns that are in a band? Or am I, I thinking know. of something else? Um, I'm, I, I might know. be thinking of something else. It's, it's a little it's different. A- um, apparently, people want me to give away a DVD. Of this, so we kind of have to do it. People, people want this in their lives. <laughs> they want it, huh? I'm telling you guys, it's it's gonna change your life. It's I'm not telling you it's good. I'm just telling you it's gonna change your life. It's the musical number and it's are, are are fun. Um, and there's some ridiculous nudity in it for no reason. I mean, the lady in it for some reason has a has a naked jacuzzi and a bubble bath for some reason during it. She's just like, ooh, bubbles, bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I've, I'm seen, gonna... I've seen I've seen this movie, but it's been a while, and I, right. I just can't remember a whole lot about it. Dude, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a you. note. I'm gonna give a copy of, on DVD away to somebody for this because it's the only way it's available. And somebody's getting this movie. It's just happening in somebody's life. Yeah, you get you got to see this dude. He's you know he's like a badass. He gets up on the stage and he's got that '80s hair, and you know he's just gonna oh. he's gonna scare the crap out of you. So you know. Yeah, I mean, and the 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 people playing the band in it were the actual band Sorcery. They they were they were a Los Angeles based band. That's them. Ah, I'm back. Well, you know, there were several of these horror movie, you know, uh, rock and roll kind of horror horror movie kind of things, and I think Trick or Treat was probably my yeah. favorite of all of them. And I think that came out later, like in 86 or 87, 88, maybe. I mean, somewhere in mid 80s. Yeah. And um, I think Trick or Treat was the best, but there were several. That's all I. It was a popular thing then. You know, the. It was a popular, the rock horror thing was kind of popular. So. Yeah. There was Hard Rock Zombies. Uh, What else? There was another one that was like. that guy Thor was in. Uh, yeah. um, I don't know. Um, I mean, um, uh, there was Blood and Roses. Was it Blood and Roses? No, Black Roses. Black Roses. There was, um, yeah, Black Roses. There was uh, Rock and Roll Nightmare. Was another one, wasn't it? Rock and Roll Nightmare. Yeah, yeah. And Trick or Treat was really the only one that kind of worked for me. Uh. Alice Cooper did a movie in 84. I didn't put on here because it's absolutely horrible called Monster Dog. Yep. It's a horrible movie. I couldn't, I can't even talk about it. Uh, Alice but, Cooper did that movie because he he thought that nobody would ever see it because they told him they would never be released outside of the country it was filmed and everybody got it. Yeah, they, they dubbed his voice the whole movie. Yeah. It's not him talking the whole movie. It's, <laughs> it's somebody else. That's why they put it on here. I couldn't do it to people. And the great thing, it was directed by Claudio Fergasso. Yeah, it was who, a Fergasso movie. Yeah, they yeah. made Troll 2, which a lot of people consider the worst movie ever. Oh, it's up there. It's <laughs> it's. He made a lot of, I mean, he made some bad movies. I mean, really. Um, but we're going off topic now. So we are going off topic. So let's say this, Rocktober. It's hilarious fun. You're gonna, I'm going to give away a DVD copy of it because... Somebody needs to see it. And I want you guys to report back to me 
after i think i feel like we need to do like a live like reaction video to somebody watching it just film them like what's going on <laughs> we're, we're rocking out now somebody's getting why it. is this happening to me you're getting a dvd people it's happening to you <laughs> all right let's go to the next one um uh, you've got one that i have no idea uh, what it is you know i like my weird asian horror all right i do know that october 19th 1984 Polani mania <laughs> aka the whole temple it's a hindi film all right it's produced by the ramsey brothers ramsey brothers were an interesting group out of bollywood that made some strange movies made some strange movies um i got you a trailer for this because people don't know what the hell I'm talking about when I say this. But all right. Go you want me to go ahead and play it? All right, here we go. go. Do it. Okay. Like, tell me what the movie is about from the trailer. Do it. Uh, uh, well, you see, <laughs> I don't really know. All right. This movie, it tells the story of these people battling a monster demon they call some men. The movie is, if you get the right version, which the movie is extremely difficult to find. It's like impossible to find. But it's like two hours and 47 minutes long. It's got everything you want in a movie. It's got gore. It's got horror. It's got dancing, fighting. It's got it's got musical numbers. It's got nudity, dancing women, pool scenes, drinking, kings, everything. It's, it's the greatest movie all. ever made. It's the greatest movie ever made. It puts Lord of the Rings to shame with how much is in this movie. And you mean you that? You mean that? It's a great movie. It's a lot of fun. It's it's not easy to follow being in Hindi, <laughs> but there is a DVD copy of it. It has English subtitles. Okay. Uh, and I, I actually got turned on to this movie from a guy I work with who's based in Malaysia gave me this movie, told me I had to watch it, and I watched a copy of it. And it's fun. Um, it's kind of long. <laughs> it's really long. But the DVD is like $98 if you find one. <laughs> so good luck. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Uh, if I find one, I'm going to send it to you, Lloyd. Um, I I would act, I would watch that. No, no, I'd recommend watching it. The, the two guys who directed it were called the Ramsey Brothers. They were they did a lot of Bollywood movies that were all over the top, like a bunch of weird stuff. Not all horror. I mean, when you're a Bollywood director, you kind of do it all. They were extremely good directors, and they they kind of after these like mid '80s, they started doing Indian television where the money was, and they stopped being creative, which is kind of sad. Um. So this is something in your life that I made you watch, and you're going to have to find it one day. Well, I know a lot of Bollywood films had singing and dancing in it. Did, did this one have singing and dancing? Yeah, yeah there's okay. singing and dancing in it. That's You heard in the trailer, that's, that's singing and dancing numbers in it. Okay. Uh, very few gory horror films came out of um, the Hindi culture, Bollywood culture. So, I've seen the... Um... I've seen some Bollywood films. Like I saw the, yeah. the Nightmare on Elm Street, Bollywood... Uh, kind of rip off thing. I can't even remember what that's called, but it's a dude. It's guitar, I think, something like that. Guitar, something like that. Uh, can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Unless you don't want me to. Uh, no, I definitely want you to. All right. So um, the next movie, October 26, 1984. Um, this is an interesting film. I've seen it, but I've not seen it in the way that I want to. It's called Silent Madness. Silent Madness. Yeah, this was an American 3D slasher Here's film. Here's a matching Wikipedia result. Oh, so Google Play jumped in on that. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, Google loves this movie. I'm telling yeah. you. Hey. <laughs> Uh, this this was an American 3D slasher film directed by Simon Nookturn. A computer error leads to the accidental release of homicidal patient Howard Johns from a mental institution. Hmm. What other movie have we seen that plot in? Mm, I don't know. 
could we have seen? Hmm. Uh, Sounds the, familiar. Yeah. The mute murderer returns to the scene oh. of his original crime. Oh, no. It could, it could be said that it was the night he came home. Oh, it's the night he came home. The night oh. he came home. Oh, wasn't this released in your favorite format, Lloyd? It was. It was a 3D slasher flick, and uh, there's no there's no 3D copy of this anywhere at this time. I'm hoping somebody jumps on board and and gets a 3D Blu-ray going to this, and I, I would buy it immediately. I don't think there's a legit copy of this movie anywhere that's been released outside of VHS, right? You're, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's never got a DVD. It's never had a Blu-ray. Um, and I think the the copy that I have is is a boot that somebody gave me. So yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure you know it's it's really <laughs> tough to find. Yeah, um, I have seen Silent Madness, but it's been so long since I've seen it. I don't know if I can say enough about it. Um, I watched this on VHS probably when I was like 15 years old. Um, I recall it, it being kind of, yeah, kind of a, a story we all know, but mm -hmm. not, not as good. Um, and I don't think I actually finished it, but if I ever find it, I'll, I'll watch it again. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't great. Um, and, but it's a slasher flick and I'm a completist. So I've seen it. Um, I can tell you it's not great, and the only reason I would probably ever watch it again is if we got a, a proper 3D release. So, there you go. Yeah. Uh, next up is another one I actually like, too. Uh, November 2nd, 84, a movie called Razorback. Yes. Ozploitation, which is Australian horror. Um, Australia, Australian creature feature, written by Everett DeRobe, uh, directed by Russell McKay, McC McCooley. I can't ever say his name right. Bukaha. Um, really, the movie's about a giant boar that terrorizes people in the outback and kills them, eats them. The plot sounds ridiculous, but the movie's actually really, really good. Um, well, mainly, it's, it's basically Jaws of the Outback. Yeah. <clears throat> the plot, I mean, the, the main reason to watch this movie, the visuals, the cinematography on this movie is remarkable. It's It's... It's insane, and that's because uh, uh, Dean Simler did the cinematography on it, and he actually went on to win an Oscar for Dances with Wolves for cinematography, so that kind of tells you. Uh, the cool thing about this is it's actually uh, sort of fact-based. I don't know if you know that or not, but it was kind of based on the, there was a case in Australia where a woman claimed that a dingo ate her baby. Maybe the dingo ate your baby. Yeah. And, and that was the thing. Everybody made fun of her and they doubted her and they said it was ridiculous and dingoes don't steal babies. And, you know, they kind of basically blamed her for it and said, well, you're responsible somehow. Dingoes don't steal babies and eat them. But it, it turned out to be true. And I don't know how they ended up proving that or what. I don't, I don't know the whole story, but. That's basically what this movie is based on. A dingo stole my baby or a dingo ate my baby. Yeah, and they made another movie um, about that, that dingo incident called Cry in the Dark from 88, which is mm -hmm. basically her story about a lady whose child was killed by a dingo. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of this is based kind of on that stuff that happened. Um, the, the director is kind of well known. He went on to do Highlander and Highlander 2. It's very yeah. kind of sad feel. Russell he Mulcahy. The, yeah, Mulcahy. He also did The Shadow with Alec Baldwin. That was 94, 95. And he kind of came to Hollywood like mid-2000s. He did one of the Resident Evil movies, but that was kind of like all he's done. And this movie is super well regarded and for and for mm -hmm. good reason. It's really good. Yeah, it's, it's a really good movie. Um, I don't know if there's a release, though. I think there is a release. I'm not positive, though. We'd have to look, but... Yeah, somebody's got a. Oh, did you find it? Uh, yeah, it's got a it's got a Blu-ray release. Somebody's somebody got somebody says real talk. One of the boar models from Razorback was repurposed for the gigantic werewolf that attacks a tent at the end of Howling Three. I did not know that. I no. didn't either. Is that the is that the uh, Howling Down Under the one in that took the like the marsupial werewolves or whatever? What if Howling Three? Mistaken. Yeah, it, uh, it was an Australian based. Um, sequel to it. Uh, I think Philip Mora did it. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. In Australia. Uh, yeah, I think I have. I think I actually have an Australian Blu-ray of Razorback. I don't think I have. Is there a U.S. one? Um, <clears throat> I see one on Amazon, but it doesn't say what region it is. Hmm. I, I'm not sure. Who knows? Um, region one is U.S. and this is. This one is not region B2. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Region. We shall continue. Uh, good movie, though. If you can get it. Um, I mean, it looks like it's not really... It's like Prime Video has it for rent. Yeah. That's the uh, best way to go, then. They only have SD, which sucks. But what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, check it out, though. It's good. Definitely recommended. Uh, oh, next what? up. Ninth, uh, November 9th, 1984. Hey, did we have a poster for this before we move on? Uh, for Razorback? I think we do. Yeah, we do. Let me pull that up. There we yeah, go. Right. No nightmare will prepare you for it. Razorback. Gregory Harrison. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Razorback's fun. Yeah, and they said it's not, not super easy to find, but... I mean, maybe if you run across it, Gregor Harrison's a, a decent actor. Yeah, the, the cast in it's really good. Yeah, good flick. All right, so uh, November 9th, 1984. Uh, this is another all time favorite of mine uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Oh, no. Originally titled Slay Ride. Uh, it's a slasher film, of course, about a young man named Billy who suffers from post traumatic stress over witnessing his parents' murder on Christmas Eve and his sub subsequent upbringing in an abusive Catholic orphanage. I think um, all of those scenes having to do with the abuse in the Catholic or orphanage are the most frightening scenes in that whole movie. They really are. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you want, uh, there are times when you just want to cry for little Billy because he is just being treated like total dirt. You know, <laughs> it's terrible. And, uh, but the movie, the movie's great. Um, everybody knows Silent Night, Deadly Night. It caused such an uproar back in the day. The parents, uh, hated it because they thought it was going to make, uh, their children scared of Santa Claus or something. And I guess nobody told the parents that it's kind of your job to not take your kids to see that movie. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> not to mention they'd already done that before with movies too. So it's like, come exactly. On. But, but yeah, it, 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 I mean, you can still get online and look up stuff about that. It caused such a huge uproar, but you know, the more people screamed and yelled about it, the more movie, the more money the movie made. So yeah. it only helped them. I mean, even like Phil Donahue had like an hour long special about this movie and why it was wrong. And I'm like, what is wrong with you people? It's a damn movie. <laughs> it's a movie, man. <laughs> uh, but it, it it's good. It's, uh, I like this movie. I love the soundtrack with the, uh, you know, all the fake Christmas songs. Um, because obviously Christmas songs are copyrighted, so they couldn't use those in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's fine. Perry Boken, who did the score is, is, is mostly known for writing the theme to the young and the restless. So he has that going for him. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> he did the theme for young and the restless. Yeah. I, I bought the soundtrack not too long ago. And, um, it's got, uh, you know, the actual uh, composed musical score, and then it's got all of the Christmas songs that were specifically written for the movie, and, and it's a fun soundtrack. I recommend getting it. Uh, yeah, I mean, get it. It's fun. I don't know what else to say about it. Except, I mean, I think a lot of people have seen it. I remember this one as a kid just because the box was always in the, in, the, in the video store, and I always wanted to see it, and... I did see it. It was fun. So just kind of how it is. Yeah. I still have the beta big box and, um, um, I had it signed when we bought, brought in uh Billy a couple of years oh, ago. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So the next one is a major, major biggie, Charles. Nobody's seen this movie, Lloyd. Don't throw people out. You think so? So I think it, it may be somewhat obscure. Yeah. Um, November 16th, 1984, this movie came out about, there was these four teenagers, all right, and they were living on this one street in this little town called Springwood, and they're stalked by this killer in their dreams, um, and thus they're killed in reality, and the killer has this bladed leather glove, 
I don't think anybody's ever seen this movie. It's I can't remember the name of it. What's it called, Lloyd? Um, uh, a lameness on lame Main dirty, Street. Dirty pillows on Main Street. Dirty pillows <laughs> on Main Street. It was called um, no Nightmare on Elm Street. Released November sixteenth, nineteen eighty four. Um, no one's seen this movie. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, that I brought this obscure movie up. <laughs> <laughs> what can you say about Nightmare on Elm Street is that it's it's a freaking classic. I mean, Charles Bernstein did the score. The score is amazing. Um, Arga, it's definitely Wes Craven's best movie by far. It's got a great cast in it. Um, Robert England, you know, Heather Langenkamp. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Um, yeah, it's probably one of the most successful movies about a pedophile that there's ever been. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> what are you gonna do? You know, it's uh it's iconic, and yeah. um, it even today you can go back and watch Nightmare on Elm Street, and to me, that's how you gauge how good a horror movie is. If you can go back, you know, twenty, thirty years later and watch it and still enjoy it then uh, it's classic and that's what this movie is. And everybody knows it. I mean, um, Robert Englund has become a modern day horror icon because of this movie. He's, yeah. he's the equivalent of uh, Bella Lugosi now. So, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> what can you say about what can you say about it? I mean, I think it's what funny can that you that, say about it. Yeah. That Kane Hodder says he was once considered for the role. <laughs> it's that's, it's funny. Because he was, <laughs> if you watch his uh, his books, his documentaries, but they went a different way with it. Um, but yeah, I can remember the first time I saw this. I was five years old the first time I saw this movie, and it didn't scare me. And that can tell you a lot about me. I just loved the movie. I think the only thing that scared me in the movie was for some reason the lamb that was wandering around the the school, making the noises. I was like, why the hell is there a lamb here? This is anarchy. There's no lamb here. What about the hall pass girl? Is that do you, I think that's to me that was the creepiest part in that movie for me. It was hall pass it was, girl. It was really creepy, and um, also the scene with Tina when she's walking down the the alleyway is pretty creepy. Yeah, um, Tina. You know this is this is true. Freddy Krueger. You know they they of course became more a little more slapstick as they went on, but this is true terrifying horror at its best. <clears throat> But, you know, I'm a big fan of part two as well, and I love part three also. I love them all, but they're different. You know, like when you get into like Dream Warrior and that kind of stuff, they're they're fun, but they're like, they're more, like I said, they're more fun than anything. They're, they're still good movies, but they're, there's a lot more comedy to them. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> definitely. He kind of becomes a, you know, he his purpose is to say one-liners, yeah. you know, throughout the sequels. But the original is is terrifying. There's you know there's not really any comedy in it. It's played very seriously, and uh, it's fantastic. It's you know it's probably one of the early films that inspired my love for the horror genre. Yeah, yeah, I believe and, you. I think a lot of us. I mean. I don't know. You kind of get stuck. You like that movie. It's just like you said. It holds up. You watch it today, and it's still, it's still fun. I mean, it's still really, really good. So, uh, you have a poster here, a Japanese poster. Japanese poster. I love my <laughs> Japanese posters. And they're this is actually one of the original Japanese posters. It's super hard to find too. I bet. I bet. It's very Japanese cool. Japanese posters were known for being super colorful because they had to draw in the crowd throughout Japan with the colors. That's kind of what sold there. Yeah, and then you know they always uh, they a lot of their posters in this one I don't really see a whole lot, but they use they used to always show the most violent scenes on their posters too. Yeah, yeah. There's not there wasn't a lot of uh, restrictions throughout Japan like there was here. That's why their posters were always a lot more gory. Wait, you know when I if you go back and watch a lot of Wes Craven stuff, it, it seemed like he was always working up towards a Nightmare on Elm Street because. If you watch Deadly Blessing, there is a bathtub scene with a snake in the bathtub that crawls in between the girl's legs. And then you had the the shower scene with Heather Lang Langenkamp. I mean, it just seemed like that would he that's what he was always it was, it was kind of like he was trying to decipher something that was going on in his head and it finally clicked with Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's kind of like what he was living. <clears throat> a lot of movies kind of have the same feel. 
I feel like his movies kind of lost that feel after this. Like he was trying to go other stuff and then trying to return to it off and on. But yeah, I mean, can you tell what else can you say? That's it. Nightmare on Elm Street. It's a classic. It's probably yeah. one of the biggest horror films ever made. Yep. Written and and I don't think that's by... hyperbole. Um, next up, Night of the Comet, November 16th, 1984. This is a super, super fun movie that I discovered. I think it was probably playing on HBO for forever. And that's where I first saw it. And it's a great movie. Night of the Comet, yeah. Um, yeah, I saw this too when I was, was a lot younger. Um, I always liked Night of the Comet. It has a great, great cast in it. Uh, some fun scenes. It's a little campy, but it works, you know. Uh, yeah, what else can we say? I think a lot of yeah. people have seen that comment, right? Yeah, it's got a very, you know, it's, of course, it's sort of dystopian and, you know, yeah. um, the the crazy, you know, future apocalyptic landscapes, the city, you know, the empty cities. Um, re really, I, I think it's a great movie, and I think it was um, something that, kind of symbolized its time you know there's a lot of mm -hmm. stuff going on in that movie from 1984 and um i'm trying to think of um she's been a guest at our show the girl that was in that uh back at when we were at the hilton uh catherine catherine mary stewart not catherine mary stewart the other girl the cheerleader with the blonde hair she was in a bunch of other stuff too kelly maroney, <laughs> kelly maroney. sorry yeah, kelly. I'm, yeah i'm losing I lost that one for a minute there, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a fun movie. Um, yeah. And like you said, post post apocalyptic sci-fi horror, you know, Kelly Maroney is pretty, you know, she's got like a, a cult following and she really only did a couple of movies. This and, and chopping mall was kind of what she did and people still love her. Um, she of course was the cheerleader in fast times at Ridgemont high. That's leading the pep rally. Yeah. <laughs> she's in that. Uh, but yeah, it's a fun movie. I mean, the director, went on to do such amazing stuff as uh honey. I blew up the kid. So he had that going up for him. He really? Did, he also did captain Ron with Kurt Russell. So Tom Aberhart. Yeah. Huh? Interesting. I, I don't think he did. He did like two horror movies back to back soul survivor and this, and then I don't think he did horror over again. And then somehow he got attached to honey. I blew up the kid. He did captain Ron. Then I think he just disappeared. He's like, screw this. I'm out of this gypsy lifestyle. So I'm gone. I blew up the kid. I had Kurt Russell as a pirate. I'm out of here. Yeah, this it's a good movie. I I definitely recommend it. It's got uh, it's got a good Blu-ray release. I don't know if it's still out there or not, but it, it did get a good Blu-ray yeah. release, which I was glad to see. Yeah, I'm, uh, gonna, um, I'm gonna give away a copy of this one too. Not a comment. Yeah. Boom. Also went awesome. along with a Rocktober DVD. Rocktober. Blood. October blood. Dun dun dun. Well, Charles, we're we're doing pretty good tonight. We're already at the last one. 84 was kind of a wasn't the best year. There was some stuff, but there was some good stuff. But it wasn't like the last, previous years where there was like 40 good movies and we had to try to whittle them down, you know. There's some movies in here that I maybe ne would not have included if it was like a more hefty year, you know. Yeah. Um 84 is a pretty good one, too, though. Um, uh, December 7th, 84. This last one, The Initiation. Have you seen this one? Absolutely, and I love this movie. It's a great slasher movie. Um, uh, it's filmed basically... In, you know it was filmed in Dallas, right? Yeah, it's filmed in Dallas. Filmed in Dallas, one of our movies. That is a Dallas movie, or at least yeah. as far as locations go. Location-wise, and... Uh, it's basically a pledge is convinced by her sorority sisters to break into the department store her father owns, and then they're stalked by a killer. I mean, it's always stalked by a killer. Stalked by a killer. Stalked by a killer. Um, I haven't seen this in a long time, though. This is actually a good movie, though. It's a good thriller. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I know the director in this Larry Stewart didn't really direct anything at all besides this. I know he did a bunch of TV shows. I think he did the Waltons when I was reading about him, the night new blood is pledged. And a very phallic looking 
a guy holding a phallic looking i don't know is that it's like a candle girl or so yeah, i don't know girl. what's going on it's very you know there's like stuff dripping from her it's uh very suggestive and uh you know it's, it's representative of the times basically yeah. <laughs> um and basically this was filmed at dallas market center so if you ever want yeah. to watch this movie it's filmed at dallas market center so it's one of our few movies we actually have you know here and it's it's a good movie it's fun it really so, is i like the initiation a lot yeah. um it's got clue Gulliger in it and vera miles mm -hmm. daphne Z zanuga is in it is an she's coming to the yeah. show she's at the yeah. september event so i'm looking forward yeah. to meeting her yep i know james reed is in it too who did quite a lot of stuff um uh -huh. got a good cast i mean basically it's got a good cast in it it does have a good cast and you know i it i think it's got a good story um and i you know i may be in the minority here but i think the story is kind of cool and it's got a kind of a cool twist ending to it and I don't know. It's just a fun little slasher flick. Yep. It's a fun slasher flick. You know, I like it a lot. Um, I'm not sure if there's a release of it. I think there, there is. is. I think there is. There is. It's um, that is an arrow release. So uh, you can get that from TFW's presenting sponsor initiation. Uh, you can get that from arrow arrow video. Yes. Yes, and coming soon, Arrow is going to be doing some of our giveaways, so we'll have that coming soon as well. Looking Boom. forward to that. We're looking forward to working with them even more. I agree. I agree a lot, and that's kind of that's kind of where we hit with 84. There's a few honorable mentions that we had. Um, what do you got, Lloyd? All right, so um, I'll go ahead and start with these, but we've got Splatter University. Which was that was released by Trauma, right? It was a Trauma movie, um, directed by Richard Haynes, I think. I can't remember, but it's not it's not the best, but it's pretty, it's it's a fun watch if you ever find it. Yeah, that's one I need to go back and watch because I don't remember, you know, loving that movie, but I don't. I also don't remember much about it, so I, need I mean, to go back and check that out. I don't say you're going to love it. It's not very good. It's why it's at the bottom, but yeah, <laughs> they made an honorable mention. Um, next one's one that I actually really like and I wanted to put on the list, but I kind of didn't. It's, it's rats night of terror. Um, yeah. Italian I really, film. I really wanted to put this on the list, but it kind of got bumped down and I kind of upset now that I didn't. Cause if I probably would have looked at our list twice, I probably would have put it on there, but Rats Night of Terror is actually good, done by Bruno Mattei and Claudio Fergasso. Um, it's about like a post-apocalyptic underground people, and they find these rats in a bunker. I don't know. It's like a, in a lab or something. It's, it's actually a fun movie. So honorable mention for that one. Uh, next honorable mention is for Wes Craven's Invitation to Hell. Yeah. Um, this is a movie that... Um, I have seen this recently. It's streaming somewhere. I know I've watched it recently, but it, I don't know. Do you know much about it, Charles? Cause it feels like a seventies movie to me. Um, not a whole lot. Um, it, it's again, it's one that had almost a non-existent budget, like completely. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was filmed around that time. It's yeah, it's really cheap. <laughs> Could say it that is, it's it's a made for tv movie if i remember correctly yeah yeah it was a made for tv movie it was it was made it was a made for tv movie um yeah and it was like a movie of the week i think it was something like that but it, it was cheap because it's a tv movie um and but robert yeah. works pretty good in it it's yeah you had a lot of tv personalities like robert urich joanna cassidy yeah. susan lucci susan and, lucci of course and you even had little Punky Brewster in this movie, Soleil Moontry. Yep, it's Punky Brewster <laughs> in it. Um, and it's not, it's not that good, but it's 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 okay. It's okay. It's not. It, it you know, it's a, it's definitely a. It feels like a TV movie, but that's why it's <laughs> honorable mention. It's honorable mention. It's on here because Wes Craven's name's attached to it. If you're one of those people who are like, I need to see every Wes Craven movie, you're gonna have to watch this. And yeah. don't come yell at me if you watch it. You're like, what the hell? <laughs> it's there all right yep 
Um, go ahead. You're next for uh, honorable mentions. Don't open till Christmas. So I like don't open till Christmas. And again, almost made the list, but since we have another much more better one here called Silent Night, Deadly Night, it got dropped. Yeah. To the to the honorable mentions list. And it's not it's not that bad, but again, it's not that good. That's why they're on the bottom list. Um, yeah, it's another uh, Christmas been, horror film, but it's a yeah. British made Christmas horror film. Yeah, and the guy who stars in it's also the guy who directed it, um, Edmund Purdom, if I'm not mistaken. He directed it, but he also stars in it. He's well known for acting. I mean, he did a lot of stuff overseas. Um, and he was in, he, I remember he played the uncredited devil and beyond the door back in the seventies, but uh, oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, um, it's not a bad movie. He was, um, he was also in pieces too. He played the, the Dean in pieces, um, but it's a fun movie. If you can get across it, it's, it's nowhere near like Saturday night, daily night, um, <clears throat> but honorable mention nonetheless. Definitely. Uh, next up, we've got another locally filmed, uh, kind of a clo Dallas ties. Um, this is 1984's Blood Suckers from Outer Space, directed yep. by Glenn Coburn. And um, Glenn, I hope you're watching. Glenn, Glenn still lives in the area, and he's actually been at our event. We've actually filmed this movie or screened this movie for uh, for them. Yeah, and I had this on our list, and. I, I think for for time I dropped a couple down. This is what I dropped down. I I enjoy this movie a lot. I mean, I think I enjoy it just because it's a Dallas movie too. Um, yeah. And it's fun to watch. It really is fun to watch. Yeah, and it says, um, I guess the what is it? A uh, um, farmers in Texas become brainwashed blood suckers. Blood suckers from outer space. So there you go. Uh, yeah, it's a fun movie. Um, so there, that's it. Um, the next one is yours. Go for it. All right. So our last honorable mention is Fatal Games. Fatal Games is it's not it's not the best movie, but if you want to see a movie where the killing weapon is a javelin, that's Fatal Games for you. That's Fatal Games. It's it's got some fun kills, but it's not. Yeah. And somebody yeah. mentioned one that I, I, I did not include on in this list that I almost did. I didn't include on our list whatsoever. I'm, I'm surprised only one person said it. What's that? 1984's Ghostbusters, which is not on our list. Because I don't, uh, feel, like, I don't feel like it's a horror movie at all. I, I got to agree with you. Uh, you know, Ghostbusters is one that horror fans can appreciate, but it's totally a comedy. And you can't say I don't like Ghostbusters because I got the damn logo tattooed on my leg. So... <laughs> Oh, I love Ghostbusters. Yeah, it's like I love Ghostbusters too. In 1984, uh, it was all about Ghostbusters and Gremlins, and but I, I do consider Gremlins to be a horror movie more than in Ghostbusters. Than, more than Ghostbusters, Gremlins is a horror movie to me. It's it's good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we've got other mentions here, like RoboCop was filmed in Dallas. I don't know when that came out. That wasn't 84, was it? That was later. Uh, RoboCop was 87. Paul Verhoeven. Okay. Not horror either. That's uh, science fiction. I yeah. put movie. I can I can do a whole show about RoboCop if you guys want me to. I mean, we could do a we could do a walking tour together of the film locations if you want because I know where they all are. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's supposed to be in Detroit, but if you look in the background, you can see Reunion Tower. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Scooby D says Ghostbusters is definitely a horror movie. All right, I don't. I love Ghostbusters, but it's, I can't. I can't horror. I can't horrorize it. I can't do it. Sorry, yeah. guys, people. I'm kind of with you. I'm kind of with you. It's a, it's totally a comedy, but hey, yeah, as a horror fan, horror fans love Ghostbusters. Look, and guys, I, I love Ghostbusters. Look at my leg. Look, I got Stay Puft Marshmallow Man and the logo. So I love Ghostbusters, and it's not on there. And I'm sorry. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's okay. We can all have our own opinions, right? Uh, but I don't disagree. If somebody really thinks it's horror, I don't disagree with them. It's just kind of the bucket I let it drop into. Yeah. I'll let, everybody has their own opinions of it. And that's that's how it is. And I let Charles make these lists, so uh, <laughs> I'm not I'm not getting involved. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Lloyd lets me make this list. <clears throat> All 
right. So I'm gonna give away a copy of Rocktoberfest. Rocktober oh. Blood. Rocktoberfest. <laughs> Rocktober Blood <laughs> on DVD and Night of the Comet. And I'm gonna give both these away to the same person. Same person's gonna get these. All right. What? This you're is an outrage. Them. Maybe double feature, but this is how we're gonna get the movies this time. All right. After this is over, I'm gonna post this YouTube video on Facebook. And then I want you guys to share it on Facebook. And then you have till tomorrow night to share it. And then tomorrow night I'll I'll tell everybody who shared it and I'll post the winner of both of them. How about that? Okay. So you're gonna pick the winner at random. Pick the winner at random. I'm gonna from, post it from the Facebook. Oh, when you post this. Yeah, I'm gonna post to our Facebook page, then you share okay. that, and okay. and until tomorrow. So I'm, I'm gonna do this quick because I don't want to let the street list drag on. So I'm gonna pick the winner tomorrow night. So share it from now to tomorrow night. So go yeah, ahead. and we'll get our technical difficulties fixed. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I I really don't know what happened. We had it all set up. We tested it. It worked, and then when we went live tonight, it wasn't working. So I have no idea what happened. But we'll try to get that fixed before the uh, Saturday show. We got it. What, what else, Charlie? What what you got? Anything? That's all I got. We're gonna be here Saturday. We are gonna be here Saturday, and we'll start um, promoting that a little more within the next couple of days. But we have uh, Brandon Crane as a guest Saturday from 1990s It, and Charlie's favorite. TV show of all time, The Wonder Years. Oh, Wonder Years, man. I'm telling you, when Winnie and Kevin first kiss, I cry like a baby. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's it's so beautiful. It is. I feel it. Um, C. 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 Repeat to the dose. I blame El Diablo for the difficulty. Well, yep. work. We'll just blame El Diablo. It's been... Yep. Uh, it's been a while since we saw El Diablo, so that may be the problem. That is the problem. So who's on Who's on Saturday, Lloyd? Who do we got on Saturday? I think I just said it, Brandon Crane. I know. I wanted you to say it again, though. <laughs> I wanted you to say it twice. I, like I, thought I, was in the, I thought I was in the twilight zone. <laughs> I, I thought I hadn't you. said that. I was like, I thought I just said that. Um, yeah, then Saturday night, House Chosen by Meredith. Meredith's going to make us watch House. Yay, Meredith. Uh, thank you, Meredith, for a great pick. Um, yeah, if you're on YouTube, make sure you're liking, like our videos, comments, subscribe, share. If you're on Twitch, I don't know how Twitch works. That's Lloyd's Domain, so <laughs> I know YouTube. We had a lot of people on join us from Twitch tonight. That's pretty awesome. That's cool. Um, but yeah, go to, go to our YouTube channel and like us and and share and everything else. Uh oh, look at this. Oh, look at that. El Diablo oh. is back. El Diablo. Everybody missed you, El Diablo. El Diablo. What's wrong with you? El Diablo's eyes. They're awfully strange. What's El Diablo doing? What is that? Is Are they playing that? Is El Diablo playing that music? Yeah, they almost got some weird music on. <laughs> I don't know, though, Diablo. Scary, scary. Whoa. The power of Christ compels you. Mm. Oh, it did work. Oh, okay, it did work. It came, the devil, the, the El Diablo came on, played as a jig, laughed at us, and then we had to make it leave. And screwed up our our whole deal tonight. I know. Screwed us up coming on at the right time. Yeah, I know. Well, well, what are we gonna do? All right. <laughs> I guess I guess we're gone. We're gone. Char Charles, thank you very much. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Thank you. Um, thank you guys. Yeah, we miss y'all, and um, we will see you again this Saturday for an action packed day of horror entertainment so action packed Lloyd I love it I love it Lloyd that I say, music no, that's what it sounds like when I, when I go to the bathroom I'm sorry I'm getting excited <laughs>
All right. Thank you, Michelle. Good night to you too. Good night, everybody. Bye, guys. Good night, T West. Good night, Glows in the Dark. Good night, Michelle, T West, hey, Meredith, Scooby, Daisy. We're gonna mention all of your names before we leave. Stephen Burt. He's probably already gone. Daisy Chainsaw. Crazy leg. Crazy, crazy leg. leg. Crazy leg. Crazy leg. Crazy leg 2006, because it's better than 2005. Screw 2005. We got 2006. Who's next? Somebody's got a good question. Is Meredith going to be on screen? Meredith, Ooh. we should get you on to join us. Meredith, you want to join us on screen? Join Ooh. us on screen for a few minutes. If you're up for it, we will send you a link and you can join us on screen. Yeah. Because you're the star. You're our star. You're a bright and shining star. <laughs> She goes, oh, uh, my, that would be a hoot. So is that a yes or? You should. You should. Well. All right. Uh, all right, everybody. We got a sure. We're doing it. We're doing it live with Meredith. Bring Coming up Meredith here. on. Make sure right. you wear some sexy clothes, Meredith. I'm wearing my pajamas for Meredith, my good ones. Mm, I'm wearing my nighty. Your, your oh, tidy nighty? Did I say that out loud? Mm, I've seen it. <laughs> it says Lloyd on the rump. Uh, All right. She says she'll even wear pants. <laughs> Woo! I don't think you should wear pants. None of us wear pants. I'm not wearing pants right now. <laughs> I know you're not. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. All right. Well, I'll believe it for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Right. We had a great time once again. I am Lloyd Cryer. You've been watching Frightmare HQ. Bye, Lloyd. Love you. Bye. Bye.